The first part of this problem asks us to find the average velocity in a situation where you walk 73.2 meters at a speed of 1.22 meters per second, and then you start running 73.2 meters at a speed of 3.05 meters per second. Now the key with this problem is that we're being asked to find average velocity. That word average is important to keep in mind because average velocity is equal to the total displacement, or in this case, because it's in a straight line, we can just say total distance, divided by the total change in time, or delta t. So because we're given the description of this person's motion in two separate phases, we want to find the distance traveled for each of those phases, and then find the total time for each of those phases. We'll add up the distances and put that in the numerator, and add up the times and put that in the denominator. So if we want to break this down even more, let's label some variables. Let's say the first distance traveled is d sub 1, and the first speed traveled is v sub 1. And the second distance traveled is d sub 2. And the second speed traveled is v sub 2. So going off of this total distance over total time logic, we're looking to find d sub 1 plus d sub 2 divided by t sub 1 plus t sub 2. And notice that d sub 1 and d sub 2 are both given to us directly in the problem, but the same can't be said for the two times. And this is where things are going to get a little bit trickier. Let's think about the way our speed equation generally functions. We usually have some variation of speed equals distance over time, v equals d over t. We don't have time given to us directly, but we can find it out for each of the phases based on the variables that are given to us. If we do some algebra on the, on the speed equation to solve for t, so multiply both sides of the equation by t to get t on the left-hand side of the equation in the numerator, and then divide both sides of the equation by v to isolate the t, we find that time is equal to distance divided by speed, t equals d over v. So a slightly more elaborate way we can write our average velocity equation for part a is d sub 2 plus d sub 1, all divided by, and then instead of writing t sub 1, I'm going to write d sub 1 divided by v sub 1, plus, and then instead of t sub 2, I'm going to write d sub 2 divided by v sub 2. So this is a bit more of a complicated looking qu a formula, but it will work for what we're looking for. So the average speed, and then we're going to plug in the numbers that were given to us in the problem, is equal to d1 plus d2, and both the distances are the same, it's 73.2 meters. So 73.2 meters plus 73.2 meters, divided by d sub 1 over v sub 1, so again that's 73.2 meters, divided by v sub 1, which is given in the problem as 1.22 meters per second. So divided by 1.22 meters per second. Then to this we're adding d sub 2 over v sub 2, so that's 73.2 meters divided by a speed for the second part of 3.05 meters per second. 3.05 meters per second. We put this into a calculator and we find an average velocity of about 1.74 meters per second. And that is our answer for part A. Part B asks us to find, a, find the average velocity for a case where we walk for one minute at a speed of 1.22 meters per second, then we run for one minute at 3.05 meters per second. So the key difference between part A and part B is that while in part A we were given the speeds and distances, in part B we're given the times and speeds for each of the two phases of the scenario. So we can say that this first one minute is t sub 1, and this first speed is v sub 1, and this first, and the second one minute is t sub 2, and the second speed is v sub 2. 
So we're going to use the same general method, the same sort of equation for average velocity, where we sum up the distances and divide it by the sum of the times, only now it's the times that are directly given to us in the problem, and the distances are where things are, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Going back to analyzing our speed equation, our v equals d over t equation. Because now it's the distances that we're missing. So now we'll want to do some algebra to solve for d. And multiplying both sides of the equation by t, we can see that the distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. So, the way we can rewrite our average velocity equation is instead of d sub 1, we can write v sub 1 times t sub 1 plus, and then instead of d sub 2, we write v sub 2 times t sub 2. And divide this by the sum of the times. So to sub in our values, v average is equal to v sub 1, which is given as 1.22 meters per second. It looks like the speeds are the same in both part A and part B, but the time is 1 minute. But to keep our units consistent, I'm going to write that as 60 seconds, so that the seconds will cancel out because of the units being consistent. Then plus v sub 2, which is 3.05 meters per second and multiply by t sub 2, which is again 60 seconds. Then we divide all of this by t sub 1 plus t sub 2, which is just 1 minute plus 1 minute, or 60 seconds plus 60 seconds, or just 120 seconds. And if we put that into a calculator, then we find an average velocity of about 2.14 meters per second. And that's our answer for part B. Part C of the problem is asking us to graph x versus t, so position versus time, for both of the, free, of the previous parts of the problem, and then include some indication of the average velocity. I'm just going to set up a pretty basic coordinate axis for each part of the problem. First, let's start with part A, where we're given the distances but not the times. So the x-axis is going to be the vertical axis, and the time axis is the horizontal axis. So in part A of the problem, the first leg of the motion goes from 0 to 73 meters. Then we go 73 more meters. So about halfway up is where we're going to have 73. Technically it's 73.2 meters, but you can round, make some rounding here. And then it goes to 146 meters, which is 73 times 2. So x is in units of meters, and t is in units of seconds. So for part A, if we do the math on the two times, then we find that after the first leg of the motion for part A, we end up at about 60 seconds, and then part A ends at about 84 seconds. So I'm going to set the upper marking on the time axis to be about 84, and then just a bit before that is where 60 is. So to represent this on a graph... We'll have to draw some lines representing where the relevant points meet, which I'm kind of setting up the basis for with these dashed lines. And then we'll use straight lines to connect these corners. This is the first leg, and then for the second leg we have a steeper slope because we're moving faster as we're running during that section of motion. I know that my drawing here is a little bit crude, but I hope you can see clearly enough that the second section of motion clearly has a higher slope, indicating higher speed, than the first leg of motion. And the problem also asks us to show how average velocity is found on the graph. And remember what I said earlier, average velocity is represented by the total distance divided by the total time. So the average velocity for the entire motion makes no re takes no reverence for the individual legs of the journey. All you would need to do to represent average velocity is just draw a line from the very beginning motion to the very ending motion. To the, very, from the beginning point all the way to the end point. So you would just draw a straight line from the starting point to the final point completely independently of the other lines. 
So something like this, where I've used a red line to represent the average velocity, and we can pretty clearly see from this graph that the red line has a higher slope, it is steeper than the slower section of the motion, but it still has a lower slope, it's less steep than the faster section of the motion with the higher slope. So the average velocity is sort of in between those two slopes. It's sort of in between those two individual speeds because it's accounting for the effects of both of them. Now let's do the same sort of thing for the situation described in part B of the problem. So I've set up a set of coordinate axes in pretty much the same way. We've got x in meters on the vertical axis and time in seconds on the horizontal axis. And I found the distances in order to label the scale on the axes. So once again, I'm using these little dotted lines to figure out where the lines are gonna go. And then I'm going to draw the connecting line as so. So here's the first leg of the motion, then the second leg of the motion is going to be steeper all the way up to the finish. And then once again, I'm going to use a red line to represent the average velocity, where we can clearly see that it is its slope is in between the two individual legs because this is representing the average velocity and so is accounting for some combination of the effects of the slower first speed and the faster second speed. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a question or a request, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. That's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.